Thank you for coming back to my channel. In this episode, I'll discuss a significant change, how buyers will purchase home and the increased cost starting August 17th. I'll also cover what to look for in a top tier agent, which will be more important than ever. I'll share tips on how to get your offer accepted and how to avoid common pitfalls. Hi, my name is Evelyn Malave, broker associate with LPT Realty. I've been selling homes in and around Central Florida since 1989 with the focus in Winter Springs. I have sold over 700 homes and along the way I have gained invaluable experience. Allow me to explain the lawsuit that changed the real estate industry. Burnett versus the National Association of Realtors. It's a class action by home sellers against the National Association of Realtors and other defendants. The plaintiffs in the lawsuit, which were home sellers, argued that the National Association of Realtors and several major real estate brokerage firms conspired to maintain high commission rates by enforcing forcing rules that requires home sellers to pay the commission of the buyer's agents as well. In October 2023, a jury found the National Association of Realtors and several brokerages liable for conspiracy to inflate commissions. Although we in the real estate industry do not agree with these charges, nevertheless, the sellers won the lawsuit and it triggered major changes to the way we do business. The two most immediate and significant consequences of this lawsuit are a shift and how real estate commissions are handled. Previously, it was customary for sellers to pay the commission of their agent and the buyer's agent as well. However, because of this legal decision, starting August 17th, buyers must sign a contract with an agent they choose to work with, which will bind them to that agent for several months and will also be responsible for paying their own agent's commission. This will no doubt impact the overall affordability of purchasing a home. As buyers will need to factor in these additional costs. Buyers are already facing the highest interest rates in 22 years, exorbitant homeowners insurance costs, extremely high home prices, and now they have this added expense. Now more than ever, it's crucial for buyers to hire an experienced realtor with a strong negotiation skills. Buyers should look for an agent who can demonstrate their past negotiation successes, as they will be responsible for hiring and paying that agent. Enlisting the services of a top tier agent who can negotiate closing cost credit on the buyer's behalf is crucial for navigating this market. The experience and reputation of the agent you choose to hire can be factors in whether the seller accepts your offer and if the seller will give you some kind of credit towards your closing costs. Let me tell you a little about myself and why I know I am a top tier broker associate. I've been selling homes right here in Central Florida since 1989. During the Gulf War, War recession in 1990, I continue selling homes despite buyers halting purchases due to soaring interest rates, which reached 10.04%. Sellers resulted to holding mortgages or allowing buyers to assume their mortgage so they can sell their home and move on. Through the Great Recession of 2008, for two consecutive years, every transaction I closed was a short sale or foreclosure. I faced the challenges of COVID. Can you imagine how difficult it is to sell homes when buyers cannot walk into them? And I still manage to sell lots of homes through the pandemic. Through each housing crisis, I adapted and learned how to secure homes for buyers. Regardless of the circumstances, I pivoted and implemented new strategies to help buyers purchase their dream home. Here's my strategy when working with buyers. Before we go out to look at homes, I make sure the buyer's approved for a loan. The buyer goes on to describe their dream home, including wants, needs, must-haves, and preferred closing date. Once I have a clear understanding of all the buyer's preferences, I will start searching for homes. These homes are from the MLS or pocket listings. After my search and before we go out to look at homes, I will let the buyer know which of these homes require flood insurance. That's an added cost and the buyer may not want to bear that expense. So we'll just eliminate those homes. We also look over the seller's disclosure statement. It's in this document where the sellers disclose improvements, defects, and if FERPTA applies. FERPTA applies when a seller is not a U.S citizen. The IRS says the buyer is responsible for the sellers leaving 15% of the sales price with the IRS or the IRS will come and collect it from the buyer after closing. If the homeowner has replaced something that requires a permit, I will verify that the county issued necessary permits. These are major items like the roof, HVAC system, windows, electrical panels, plumbing, fences, 
pools, and a few other items. And if we're going to see older homes, I will make the buyer aware of potential problems associated with older homes, like erosion and water pipes that come with age. The reason why homeowners insurance is so expensive for older homes is because so much can go wrong with them. Not only are older homes the most expensive to insure, but these are also the first homes that insurance companies will cancel. After I have made you aware of the good, the bad, and the ugly, now we can go see homes. As we are walking through each home, I will point out potential problems with items that I know will keep you from getting homeowner's insurance. Or an insurance company will agree to insure the home to get you through the closing. And shortly after closing, they will give you 30 days to make the improvement or they will cancel your policy. Here are some items that will keep you from either getting homeowner's insurance before closing or trigger a cancellation shortly after closing. Settlement cracks around the outside of the house, trees too close to the home, dangerous old and defective electrical panels like Federal Pacific, Zenso, and Challenger. Still today, over 28 million homes in the U.S. have these electrical panels. Just last year, I saw four homes where the seller had to replace these panels so we can close. Aluminum wiring, polybutylene, and flex plumbing are also not insurable. Insurance companies often require a four-point inspection before issuing a policy. And the four items are plumbing, electric, HVAC, and the roof. And most are also requiring a wind mitigation inspection. This inspection examines water intrusion. Its focus is on all openings of the home. The roof, windows, garage, and doors. If the roof is over 10 years old and or has an old water heater inside the house, it may lead to a cancellation or very expensive insurance. If your homeowner's insurance policy is canceled for any reason, the lender will force insurance on your home and the premium will be almost twice as much as what you were paying. A home inspection is not mandatory, but it's highly recommended. The sales contract is contingent upon the buyer satisfaction of this home inspection. This inspection provides a thorough assessment of the condition of the property, identifying any existing or potential problems. This includes structure issues, electrical problems, plumbing defects, roof damage, and a host of other things. Overall, a home inspection ensures a buyer is making a wise investment and helps avoid any unexpected costs and problems after purchasing the property. Before you sign the offer, I will explain every paragraph of all 13 pages of the contract. I will make sure you clearly understand the entire contract before you sign it. I will ask the seller to make a contribution towards the buyer's closing cost. The buyer can then use some of that contribution to offset some of their expenses including the realtor fee. I make sure you understand all disclosures, all HOA rules and requirements. Once a buyer chooses a home, I can give you a clear idea if the mortgage payment will increase after closing. Let me be clear, if the buyer chooses a fixed interest rate, the principal and interest will never change. However, taxes and insurance can cause mortgage payments to increase or decrease, though almost often an increase. This won't come as a surprise because I will have already provided you with an estimate of what the actual taxes will be after closing. And you will have already received an insurance quote. Let me explain why a new buyer will pay higher property taxes than what the current owner is paying. Let's say the current owner purchased the home for $150,000. They have homestead exemption, which offers the current owner a discount and protection from taxes increasing too high. Now comes a new buyer who purchases the home for $450,000. The county or city will now assess the home at the new value of $450,000. And this is why the new buyer will pay more in taxes. These taxes are only adjusted January 1st of every year. Now back to the offer which I will write based on a competitive market analysis, which examines all comparable properties that have recently sold in the neighborhood. This analysis is meant to remove emotions from the transaction, providing the buyer with a clear understanding of the market value and preventing them from overpaying for the home. The seller
seller's asking price does not always reflect the true value of the home. It could be that the seller is purposely pricing the home too low to get multiple offers, which is a strategy often used by sellers. Or sometimes the asking price is too high and the seller is only testing the market. The competitive market analysis may not reveal an exact price, but it will give us a tight range. And if we're competing with other offers, I have strategies we can implement instead of overpaying for the home. Starting August 17th, when I represent a buyer, I will ask sellers to compensate the buyer a specific dollar amount so the buyer can then offset some of their expenses. Before writing the offer, I make sure that the buyers are fully approved for a loan, not just pre-approved. The difference is that the buyers will have already submitted their W-2s for the last two years, pay stubs and bank statements to the lender. This makes the loan contingent only on the house itself, giving the buyer a significant advantage over other buyers when competing for the home. The lender the buyer chooses is crucial to the transaction and must be available seven days a week. When we submit an offer, the seller's agent will want to speak with the lender to confirm that the buyer can close the deal on time if the offer is accepted. Before writing the offer, I also speak with the seller's agent to get a feel for the seller's terms. It may be that the seller must stay in the home a few days after closing, or the seller may have to choose the closing date because of capital gains taxes, and if the home is vacant, they may want a quick closing. How the offer is structured is just as important as the price we're offering. This can significantly make your offer more attractive to the seller. It takes an agent with lots of experience, such as me, to show the seller why you are the most qualified buyer for their home. Once the offer is accepted, I will accompany the buyer to all of the inspections. After the inspections are completed and if needed, I will get quotes for repairs and renegotiate credits on the buyer's behalf. It is me who will oversee the entire lending process, assist with writing letters of explanations if needed. I will handle any issue with the appraisal, HOA or survey. I will be in contact with the title company and as I receive the lien search, a stop a letter, potential violations and survey, I will explain them to the buyer and work to correct anything that's not satisfactory to the buyer or the lender. I will not hand you off to another realtor or assistant. I will be by the buyer's side from the beginning through closing and beyond. I bring over 30 years of experience and negotiation on your behalf and it will be my pleasure to represent you. Can you please do me a favor? If you find this information informative, can you please subscribe to my channel? Below, I will post links to the Seminole County School District, a link for the Winter Springs calendar so you can see all the fun activities going on throughout the summer break, and a link to the Humane Society. They are always in need of volunteers and donations. I appreciate you coming back to my channel. Bye for now and be safe.